time with Herman and Sharon. Thank you, Brooke. That means Hi, I everybody. love you. We want you to meet our guest today. Watch this. May I introduce Lori Cordova Moore. Thank you. Thank you, Alexandria. I want to thank all the people who worked, volunteered to make this happen. And I also want to stay, thank Steve Alembic for making this happen as well. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm the president of a nonprofit organization who is dedicated to educating Christians about their biblical responsibility to stand with our Jewish brethren and defend the state of Israel against the rise of global anti-Semitism. But never in a million years would I have thought that I would live to see the day that that anti-Semitism has become evident within our government. Ilhan Omar, as you all know, as a sitting congresswoman, she went to Tampa, Florida to speak at an Islamic Relief USA event. They are an arm of the Muslim Brotherhood. Why isn't there an investigation to find out what her associations and her, her involvement is with these organizations? She is raising money, ladies and gentlemen, as a sitting congresswoman. And she says the money is gonna go to help, it's humanitarian aid, to help people in Yemen. Really? What people in Yemen is she going, is she raising money to fund? This is extremely dangerous. And what's even more appalling is that our government has not launched an investigation. Not only did she go there, but she went out to Los Angeles to speak at the Council on American Islamic Relations, another, another arm of the Muslim Brotherhood. And where is the investigation? We are also calling on the Attorney General to launch an investigation into her involvement. That wow. young lady is Laura Kadosa Moore. She is founder and president of Proclaiming Justice for the Nations with the mission to educate Christians about their biblical responsibility to stand with Israel. Oh, and we have been yeah. friends for a long time. Yeah. We have this been. This is such yes. a classy lady. <laughs> I, I have no idea uh, how she has time. I mean, you are all over the place. You have to be at banquets. You have to be speaking. Yeah. You have to keep yeah. this message constantly before the people. Absolutely. Because we, like the Israelites, forget. We mm -hmm. do. We do have a habit of doing yes. that, yeah. I call it. I mean, I see in the Bible, you know, when I read through the Bible, I say, reminding them again, remember I yeah. took you through right. the Red Sea. Right. Remember I took you through. Remember I took you through. And so we, we tell the story every year at Passover. Yes. Yeah. Over and over yes. and over. Well, the yes. thing of it is, at our age, you know, we, we were born, you know, during the Second World War. So, right. you know, as we grew up, it was one of those things we would never forget. Yeah. We would never forget what happened. And it's like, kind of blows our mind yeah. now that we're at the point we are in, Amer in the United States of America. Yeah, absolutely. We can take 9-11. You know, we have a bunch of young people who are going into public school system and they, they weren't alive or some were just born and, when 9-11 yeah. happened. And exactly. no one allows them to tell who did it. No. You know, we can't say that it was Muslims. Yeah. It just was terrorists. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. That's what we it see in the Quran. Or she, she, said some, yes. she said As some she people said. did some, something. something. That's how she said. Yeah. Oh, yes. Well, oh, good yes. to have you again. It's, ba it's wonderful to be back. And, and did we ever think, all the times we've, I mean, she, she speaks at banquets. We usually have a breakfast at NRB, right? Yes. In Nashville. Mm -hmm. all right, we're going to go back there again, aren't we? Well, we are going to be back in Nashville, thank God. Yeah, I know. Because <laughs> it makes it a lot easier on us. Yes. I, I know. I did, all the way to Anaheim the last time. We didn't go. Oh, my go. gosh. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Years ago, I, I did uh, 40, 42 shows in Anaheim. Oh, my yeah. gosh. And, and so that, that kind of did my whole life yeah, in right? Anaheim. Yeah, right? Oh, but no. but you, you you speak all over the place because and you're in Israel all the time. Yeah, we just came back from South Africa. We're launching a new chapter there. Christians, you know, because of our global reach with the Focus yeah. on Israel show, it's broadcasting around the globe. 
um, in 200 nations, it's not a surprise that Christians, even in other Western countries yeah. and even India yeah. and Croatia, mm -hmm. we have Christians who respond and they say, we want to help. We want to start a chapter here. So we're going to be starting two new chapters. We're, we're getting ready to launch uh, two conferences, one in Cape Town and one in Johannesburg in October, November this year. And then in 2020, we will be launching two new international chapters, one in Australia and one in the Netherlands. Do you get pushback in churches and pastors? Um, we had a large church in South Africa that initially offered, invited us to host the conference at their congregation, at their church. And when the pastor did a little bit more research on me, they just invited me. Wow. They rescinded the invitation because pastors are afraid. In South Africa, the ANC, their government, mm -hmm. is in bed with Hamas. Yes. Yeah. yes. And so, of course, I go to the Christians in the community, and we spoke, when I spoke to the leaders back in June, um, we brought in all the pastors and, and some Jewish leaders, and I said to the pastors, I said, 80% of you are Christians in this country. You're like America. How could you have allowed your government to allow the whole Israel being an apartheid state coming out of your country in Durban? And I said, who spoke up? Where was the, the outcry from the church saying, wait a minute, this is false. This is propaganda. This mm -hmm. isn't true. And one of the pastors initially, after I was done, I thought, oh boy, I'm gonna get it. <laughs> Here I am coming from the America. you're kind of gutsy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, how dare yeah. you say such a thing? But one of the, the black South African pastors stood up and said, you know what? We receive your message as a mandate from God. And if we will be faithful, God will use South Africa to change all of the African continent. I was like, wow. Then another pastor got up and said a very similar thing. We received this, we need to repent that we didn't stand up for our brethren. And it says in the scriptures in, in 1 John, if you do not love your brethren, you don't love God. Right. You can't say that mm -hmm. you love God and you hate your brethren. Right. Where did and your love for Israel that you have, where'd that come from? We're talking about a burning love. Oh, yes. well, it comes from reading the Bible. You know, the Bible is the book of life and it breathed life into me when I started seeing because you know, I was raised Catholic and then I went into the Protestant faith. And when- In your it, other life, you were a model, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, I did do some modeling oh, yeah. every once yeah. in a while, <laughs> acting on yeah. camera. Yeah. Um, but no, um, I started to study the Bible and I, I realized that the things that I had been taught were not true. So when I started challenging pastors that adopted replacement theology, I said, where do you substantiate this position in the Bible? Could you give me book, chapter, and verse? And they could never do it. Mm -hmm. They're reciting their doctrines and their traditions yeah. that are handed down, yeah. even all the way back to the early church fathers, because some of them that were gentle, Gentile, not the Hebrew church fathers, but the Gentile, they hated the Jews. They distanced that's themselves. Right. And that's where it started. And then Constantine came in and, mm -hmm. you know, and then we can go up to Martin Luther. Even Calvin. Yeah. Oh, yes, absolutely. I mean, it, People that we study and we, we um, respect yeah. and admire yeah. in the faith, mm -hmm. when you find out some of the things that they wrote about in their attitude toward the Jews, I'm like, oh my gosh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's why, and when I started to see that, I said, uh-uh, there's an injustice going on here and somebody needs to correct it. Sign <laughs> me up. Here yeah, I but, am. But I, I mean, you have such a passion mm -hmm. that you would think somehow you're dead. It, was a rabbi or something. It's, it's, well, it's, it's interesting because I do, the Cardoza family is of Sephardic Jewish descent. And I met one of my long lost cousins, Rabbi Nathan Lopez Cardoza, really? when I was in Jerusalem a couple of years ago. And when we greeted, he says, welcome cousin, <laughs> welcome back. Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> yeah, it was, it just, it brought tears to my eyes. It was really powerful. So yeah, the DNA is in there and you can't remove that DNA that's when it's be, there. That's, that, that, that's gotta be your, it's, so, it's like your, your bloodline. Yeah. Yeah, it really but, is. But you know, when you read the, the text of scripture and you see God's plan yeah. right there laid out and you see that biblical truth, yeah. You mm -hmm. can't not yeah. say, wait a minute, why aren't we teaching this to the church? And I'm telling you, the more our Focus on Israel show, I just had a show air last week, and I got the nastiest email from a Christian. 
And I was like, are you, I, I emailed him back. Something you said. About how nasty my last program was and that I should love my, my brethren. I said, what are you talking about? Well, he was saying that because I was only focusing on the Jews and not the Arabs and the Palestinians and oh the, I said, you know what? Yeah. Have you heard, uh, let, me, let me give you an update. If you're watching again, <laughs> they want the Jews dead. <laughs> yeah. Enough said. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's, it's obvious. You can see it with what the, even here, the imams in the United States are preaching this hate mm -hmm. to kill the Jews yeah. in the mosques in the United States of America and they get away with it. We expect it in the Middle East. Yeah. But there, are, what's another interesting thing that's happening is there are Muslims who are standing up and speaking on behalf of the Jews, Praise and the they're Lord. condemning this Islamist mentali mentality. But they could die. Yeah, they could die. They would. They yes. probably have um, yeah. a fatwa yeah. put yeah. out on their head sure. to kill them because they are speaking out against these this ideologue and this teaching. Okay, did uh, that spot that I wanted to show? Yeah. We have actual people that hate the Jews in our government now. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, is... did we? I mean, we we've talked a number of times about what you do and yeah. trying to encourage people to to support this. Find it uh, in our communities. Yes, mm -hmm. and and the website. Go to that website, mm -hmm. please support this because I mean, she is like like a one person army. Mm -hmm. I mean, you have a lot of people yeah. around you. Mm -hmm. And you have to do a lot of things, yeah. And 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 you have such responsibility, and 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 but you do it with class. I mean, every time I've ever seen you speak, I go, oh, "My goodness, she looks like oh, a first lady." Late. Thank you. Well, that's very kind of you to say so. No, I mean the passion comes from the Lord, and I know that I'm standing on truth. And when you know that you're standing on truth, when you're standing on solid yeah. a solid yeah. foundation. Yeah. You can speak with authority and confidence. Yeah. I'm not intimidated by these Christians, these yeah. nasty emails that I get from supposed Christians or even pastors who challenge and condemn what we're doing. So how bad I, is it I, getting? I don't know if we can get a shot of this right there, but this is, I, I, I like this. this yeah. it, it's, it's black and white, folks. So, But I mean, can you imagine she says things against Israel, against the Jews. Yeah. And gets away with it. She quotes yeah, from bad. the book, The Protocols of the Learned Elders of Zion, which is a fraudulent piece of material. And even, this is what's interesting, a Russian civic court condemned the protocols and said that it was fraudulent work. And, you know, unfortunately, this lie about the Jews um, being in control of the banks, being in control of the media, being in control of Hollywood. Well, if they were in control of Hollywood, maybe we would have more pro-Israel messages, yes. programs coming out of Hollywood. Yeah. But it's pro-Muslim. It's pro yeah. well, watch the shows they do on, on, on that. The whole narrative is starting to change yes. and they're manipulating and you see it through the advertising. Look at the commercials. Look at mm -hmm. how they're presenting yeah. the people that they bring into the commercials. You would think that, you know, there's a whole, there's a, there's racism yeah. against the whites now. And we see that there happening, is. but yeah. you don't see that representation. Spielberg, wake up. <laughs> and all the others yeah, too. <laughs> all the other, but, you, but you know, what is amazing though, I mean, like, like Schumer and these others. Right. I mean, they've got people in the Democrat party that hate the Jews and they are Jews. They wouldn't even condemn, they couldn't even pass a resolution. Nancy Pelosi should have used her authority to go to the Congress and say, look, if you cannot agree to introduce, bring me a resolution that names Ilhan Omar and her anti-Semitic quotes or comments that she's made, she could have easily said, don't bring me this this um, this resolution unless this is in it. Yeah. But no, what did they do? They watered it down. They mm -hmm. compromised. They made it a generalized. They never talked about yeah. anti-Semitism. So it covered everybody. Didn't mention her name. Yes. Yes. No, she needs to be called out. Yeah. And if the if our Congress won't do it, guess what? We will. But you know, Congress. They're investigating now. Yeah. Well, it's about time. Yeah. We called. We, we um, in fact, I went to Pelosi's office and delivered a um, a letter 
written to her asking her to remove Ilhan Omar, to investigate, launch an investigation into her activities, especially with Muslim Brotherhood front groups. I sent a letter to A.G. Barr, the attorney general, asking him to do likewise. This woman has gone, has raised money for the Islamic Relief USA. She's raising money for care. These two organizations are front groups oh to goodness. the Muslim Brotherhood. Donald Trump, the way to solve this problem with the Muslim Brotherhood in the United States, President Trump needs to declare that the Muslim Brotherhood is a terrorist group. Yeah. Um, we know that um, now they're watch, big supporters watch, of BDS. Watch comes out and says, you can't do that. Watch the individuals. It will be the Democrats 100%. Oh, yes, absolutely. I mean, it's like, are you kidding but me? But if we could do that, it will solve the problem of the groups that are inciting violence on college campuses because Students for Justice in Palestine and the Muslim Student Association, they're all tied to the Muslim Brotherhood also. And if President Trump would just declare that yeah. they are a terrorist group, every one of them would have to leave. They'd have to shut down their clubs. They'd have to shut down their agenda and leave the country. Oh, hey, Dave, can you put that website up again? Because people can actually go to that website, right? PJTN.org. Yes. 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 Uh, and, and there it is. Keep it on there for a while. Uh, it's it's yeah. proclaiming justice to the nations. No, no. Put the put the website on. That. Oh, for the petition, yes, the exact petition. petition. Yes, yeah, that, that petition. Keep that mm -hmm. on there. Go, go to that website and petition mm -hmm. that that Omar be I, removed. Yes, we have you know, almost she, you fifty thousand signatures they now. Just, I just heard last night that she is. Had they followed the law, she would not have been elected. Yeah. No. So she's fraudulent. In Congress. Yep. In there, giving her. Access, yes, access to to highly um, to high to intelligence information yeah, that's what she's doing. that she could share mm -hmm. with the Muslim Brotherhood front groups that she's raising money for. Which you for. know she does. You know she does. She swore on the Quran. She didn't swear on that Bible. She made a commitment to uphold her faith, not to uphold our constitutional republic. Can, can you? I mean, who would have thought? There's nobody would have ever believed it right after 9-11 and you see George Bush says, you know, we hear yep. you and all of the things that were done. And if we could have said, well, uh, President Bush, uh, let's fast forward this 20 years. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll have a Muslim in Congress mm -hmm. against touching any mm -hmm. Muslims whatsoever mm -hmm. and being sworn in on the Koran. Now, this I mean, is everybody huge... would have said, no, 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 no. Yeah, no, this is a huge agenda. There is um, there was an a article or a, a statement released that the Islamic community are trying to find, fi they're looking for 5,000 people to run for office for local, yeah. state, mm -hmm. federal seats. There is a reason why they're sure. doing this. Sure. It's not because they want to adopt our, our um, constitution and adopt our culture and our ways and we can see that clearly with Ilhan Omar, with Rashida Tlaib, with Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. They have an agenda mm -hmm. and they have people that are providing the strategy, wow. the communications to communicate what they're doing. They know exactly what what they're doing. Go to that way up. Thanks Dave for keeping that up. Go to that website and protest, 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 yeah. protest. And then when you use the other websites that, that'll be on later on, support uh, Laura Cardoso uh, Moore's uh, organization. I mean, it is, it is one of the best. They're not in it for the money. They're in it because they're doing what God told her to do. So why don't you right now just make a commitment, $100, $50, $10, whatever you can give. But but your organization That's is exactly always right. minus in the funds. Yeah. I go back to you just saying about the, the Christian man that that uh, that said what he said to you. Yeah. You know, I don't know if he emailed you or what he did, yeah. but I'm going, how can that be? How can Christians not realize? Because we were warned by the prophets that in the last days, yes. even the elect would be deceived if it were possible. And if the elect can be deceived, then we know that the lay person can be deceived. They have swallowed this, the lie yeah. and the disinformation. They yeah. believe it. Yeah. Instead of going to the Bible and letting this be the foundation as to how we view the world that we live in, the culture that we live in, 
Um, what is our role in this time that God has given to us to be on the planet? Make no mistake, we're here on the earth at mm -hmm. this time with all of this going on around us yeah. for a, a specific purpose. And God is watching to see what we will do. Faith without works is no faith at all. We can say we have faith in God, but if we aren't willing to live that faith with our works, people should see. And what is more righteous, to protect the rights of a few terrorists or terrorist supporters, or to protect the vast number of innocent people. It is more righteous for us to do that, yeah. to protect the defenseless, especially as we know in the book of Ezekiel, as the watchman, what is the role of the watchman? The, the watchman, when he sees the enemy advancing on the city, he is to sound the alarm, he is to blow the trumpet to warn the inhabitants, so that in the event that any blood is spilled, it won't be required of that watchman because he warned the people to take cover, to get ready, to stand up. But if the watchman refuses to warn the inhabitants of the city, like today, like what's happening in our government, mm -hmm. like what's happening in the United States, if we do not warn the innocent people in our communities and blood is spilled, it will be required of us. Yes. Yeah. We have a huge responsibility. You do, I do. Those of us in the audience, our, the viewing audience have a responsibility because now they're hearing the truth. For the first time, we have a president that I, other than Reagan, that I can remember that you know yeah. when Netanyahu or others come from Israel in the White House, that he mm. really respects them, yeah. is glad they're there, and look what Honors this president, them. he actually kept his word. The yes. embassy will be put in Jerusalem. It's exactly where the embassy should be. And there were a lot of people who were opposed to it. Oh, you're gonna incite violence. Well, where's the violence? Well, we still see the violence, but it's no different than the violence Didn't we've seen. <laughs> no, it's no. been that way forever. And yeah. it will remain that way until the Lord returns. And then, he, then the Golan Heights he, he established. So yeah. was, I mean, it, there, there's so much this guy, this president has done and it takes guts, it just does. like what you have to do. It, I, it does, and I think it's why God continues to bless him. You know, you exactly. mentioned earlier, how do you keep doing this? You know, I always say to people, look at Donald Trump, he's in his 70s. You know, I'm 57. I should still be able to do yeah. and keep up yeah. with him. But look at what he's doing. He just keeps on yeah. going. He's not, he doesn't miss a beat and he doesn't allow the naysayers and the liars yeah. to, 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 um, to miss his stride. Yeah. He mm -hmm. stays firm yeah. and he fights. And yes, people don't like him tweeting, but you know something? He knows how to go after them. Yeah, he is he always does. working on offensive. He's yeah. not working, he's not <laughs> having to explain himself, yeah. working defensively. He is always going after them to ex using every opportunity to expose. If it wasn't their for lies. Twitter, we would not know what he's doing. <laughs> it's so true. Because the media who hates his guts <gasps> won't. Well, yes. They would put out their own words yeah. and say that it was Trump that said that. Right. But right. his tweets destroy everything yeah. that they plan. You know, I just I just always bring my cap when Lori is here. But <laughs> but uh, what I did with my sharpie, uh, D D Dave, you can show it on the screen. I took a picture of this one. But there it is. Look at that uh, USA right in the middle. And I think that is so neat that USA in the middle of Jerusalem. I mean, it's mm -hmm. pretty obvious God had something in mind. It's exactly where the yes. United States of America should be. Yes. Right in the heart of Jerusalem. Absolutely. Because when the Lord comes and returns to set up his kingdom, where's he gonna rule and reign from? Do you mm -hmm. take tours to Jerusalem? We are actually taking our first tour. We've taken smaller tours, yeah. groups of you know four or five, maybe yeah. six people, but we're gonna take our first tour in um, June, May, June of 2020. Hey Dave, sh That's show great. Sharon and, and our first tour to Jerusalem, there, there we are. Our first I, and only tour. I, I, I love I, that. I told, I told Laura, I said, I had Trump hair before he had Trump <laughs> hair. <laughs> so maybe he copied my hairstyle. Uh -huh. But but it, 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 it is, it, if you've never been there, and you've heard this so many times, yeah. I'm sure, it, you don't know the no. experience until you're there. It is. You have to see, you have, you to, have to see the logistics of everything. You have to see the reality. You know, we took our girls there last year and they're all involved in the ministry now. They're all involved in media. Oh, that's great. And, um, you have one, what, five children? We have five children, that's four great. girls, one boy. Wow. And, Can um, I say this? Can I ask all of them to pray for? Stan, yes. Stan? Please, 
Yeah. Okay, Stan is going through some That's her tests husband. and and he's serious. Yeah. And, Start. and God's healing power, you yes. know, corporate prayer, prayer. Yes. I mean, when we agree yes. across the country right now yes. because we have a ton of viewers. Yeah. If we agree praying for Stan. Mm -hmm. Amen. And and for the tests that yeah. somehow God will intervene before they have that test. And mm -hmm. Lori and we, we just had prayer in a green room and I just yeah. said, when they go back in there to, mm -hmm. they, they, they say it's stage four, when they go back in there, they go, I don't get this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, 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 there's, there's, there's nothing there. I don't, mm -hmm. I don't know what happened. And Stan can yeah. go, well, I do. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Yeah. So we're believing God. So yeah, I, we covet your prayers. Yeah, please yeah. everybody pray, everybody pray. Somebody watching right now, tell them why they need to support your organization because your organization is just fabulous. I well, mean that. There is no other That's organization. Right yeah, there's no other organization that is educating Christians around the globe using media. We all know, we understand the impact of media. And we are flooding the media market with biblical truth about Israel to Christians all over the globe Amen. because Christians are the largest audience and Christians are responding. And so if you sitting here watching this program, um, if you want to get involved in something, you know, Henry Blackaby years ago, and he really motivated me through his experience in God um, Bible study. Yes. I wanted to be involved in what God was doing. I wanted my life to mean something. I wanted to do something that would make a, a difference in my time here on this earth. And to, and to re be remembered by, by my children, to remember that I set the example to my family. Mm -hmm. and, and Henry Blackaby said, if you want to be used by God, he said, look at where God is working and put yourself in the middle of it. And that's what I decided to do. And God, God. is blessing what we, were, we are doing, but we do need your financial support. It's not, it's not inexpensive, as you know, to keep programs on the air reaching a global audience, but the mm -hmm. Christians are responding. And that is the proof in the mm -hmm. pudding. And we're hearing from Christians all over the globe who are financially supporting us as well. They're sending us contributions like from Croatia. And we have one woman, an elderly woman who gives from Poland. So oh, all yeah. of these places yeah. around the world where we've seen anti-Semitism, there's Christians rising up who are saying, I want to be a part of this last, this end time movement of what God is doing. And we're going to be held responsible yes. for what we yeah. do and, and don't do. God told mm -hmm. Abraham that I will bless those who bless you and he who ignores you, I will utterly destroy. Oh. Yes. We right. can't even ignore Israel. We can't mm -hmm. say, and I've had pastors say, oh, well, that might be your, ish, your calling. God may be calling you to that, but he's not calling me. And yeah. I just say, oh, Woe well, be it unto you that you would say such a thing mm -hmm. about the apple of God's eye. Yeah. Well, this book, you do realize, this is a Jewish book. Yeah, you right. understand that, okay? So if you want a blessing, support mm -hmm. this organization mm -hmm. that is constantly opening the mind and letting the message go forward because unless you're reminded, just like we just mm -hmm. started talking about when we yeah. began this interview, You've got to be told often, mm. pray for the, I pray every morning for the peace of Jerusalem. Do that. God bless yes. you. Bye-bye.